Hello everyone, Dr. Ziyad Tahir here. This video tutorial is vibration analysis, frequency domain representation. So this is the second video of this vibration analysis series. So this is playlist of vibration analysis and there is a video vibration analysis time domain representation how to find log limit decrement damping ratio and natural frequency from uh, time domain so in this video tutorial i am going to apply fast fourier transform uh, on time domain signal to so this is time domain signal time on horizontal axis displacement on vertical axis and it this one is the frequency domain response on horizontal axis the frequency and on vertical axis spectrum so that is a signal for a cantilever beam with a mass attached at the end so it was excited and uh, to set into vibration and then its response for six second is measured so this is the data which is uh, which will get from some data acquisition system so time and displacement there are two columns in that text file so usually uh, the data which come from data acquisition system or those sensor software so they are either in text file in data file or in as a excel file so i am using here to import data or to import data i have provided detail in the previous video so that data is being imported so now i have time and displacement and i am going to represent that data in time domain so that is the time domain data so that is the time domain data and here you can see that uh, so that uh, for the first four cycle amplitude of vibration is constant and this is a periodic force is being applied and then after it so force is being removed and due to the damping the amplitude of vibration is decreasing so we need to find what is the uh, frequency of this signal and then and this one will apply using fast Fourier transform so this type of problem you can learn in theory like as in the book here is the mechanical vibration by ss rao and in this book there is a topic of time domain and frequency domain representation so that is the data in time domain and then the Fourier series expansion equipment is a description of any periodic function using either the time domain or a frequency domain. So, for example, a harmonic function, so this is a function, can be represented by the amplitude and frequency in frequency domain. Now, remember, uh, while we are using fast Fourier transform, so it will not give us amplitude. The fast Fourier transform will not give, will not give it uh, like amplitude here if i press fft so then it will take me to the help so that is fft fast Fourier transform so syntax for that is yfft x and n so yfft compute the discrete Fourier transform of x using fast Fourier transform algorithm and n is the endpoint that discrete Fourier transform so here what is n so n is the transform length so the transform length specifically a positive integer scalar from the transform length can increase the performance of ft the length is typically specified over a power of two or the value that can be factorized into product of small prime numbers so if n is less than the length of the signal then FFT ignore the remaining signal value past the nth entry. 
so if n is equal to 0 then f of t is empty matrix so n must be n must be like n it must be greater than length of the signal and must be greater than length of the signal and then it is 2 into whatever is the raised power of 2 raised power n so in the syntax again like here are few examples so that is the example so sampling frequency is important to know here while you are going to perform Fourier transform and the details about that i am going to use the same script which is here to plot this fast Fourier transform and if you click on the example so post Fourier transform example so that is a signal and all of it example like for this signal if it is at two frequency when you're going to perform fast Fourier transform so it will give a double-sided uh, transform and we need to use only a single sided for that like as here you can see 0 to 25 so it is giving frequency at 15 and 20 and minus 15 and 20 and we need to get only the positive value and here you can further study about it okay so in MATLAB what we have now the first one I need to find the sampling frequency and for sampling frequency because this sample like time it is going to start from zero and it goes up to it goes up to like six seconds and for one second its value is approximately at one so i can get that one like how much is at one so at one the sampling frequency is about 500 so i will use that uh, script for that so find time so interpolation when time is nearest to the one okay so when i am going to get it so it i'll get the sampling frequency as 501 why is that 501 because it is this one is going to consider zero so then I'll take one negative or minus for that. So L is the length of the signal and I'm using here displacement. So the length of uh, displacement here is 3001. So then its length is 3000. So I'll run those two and I'll find out. Okay, so now N. So N, F, F, so N must be greater than length of the signal so the length of the signal here when we are going to get it so like as i uh, i have written that script so l is the length of the signal so then here it says that n is the so it n comes as 4095 so 4095 so with 4095 i'll keep it like it is the next power of 2 so l is here is 3000 and next power of 2 raised power next power comes as 4095 like and then what i am going to do here x fft x is equal to fft and then displacement into n and n i have just find out that and then so from here i'll get that x so now uh, i need to compute the two-sided spectrum and it is p2 absolute and then compute single sided spectrum from two-sided spectrum so these are the two commands for that and then here you can further read about that what is two-sided spectrum and how to convert that two-sided spectrum into one-sided spectrum okay so then uh, then i got that so now the spectrum here it is not when we are in matlab using fast fourier transform so when we are going to uh, draw fast fourier uh, like in a frequency domain here you can see that xp is from 8 to minus 8 
and when it goes to uh, frequency domain so horizontal axis is frequency but here here the vertical axis is p1f and what is the p1 that is the single sided amplitude spectrum so it is we can say that it is a amplitude of sp spectrum amplitude so that is not the amplitude of the signal and there again here down uh, like there is another example here so you can see that amplitude is uh, 1.5 and when the signal is being uh, like fast Fourier transform is being applied on that so it goes up to 250 so that is a spectrum not the mag uh, like uh, not the amplitude that's why they have mentioned here magnitude not the amplitude but in most of the books like as I, here in the books so when you are going to perform any fast Fourier transform so they actually gave amplitude okay now the next one I need to define the frequency and that is a frequency and now I am going to plot that figure so with all that so here I got that figure so now here the vertical axis is a normalized amplitude or normalized spectrum and horizontal axis is the frequency so then I can here once again so I can limit that sorry so here I got that one so here is one peak and then there are some secondary peaks like at 50, 100, 150, and 200, and then even 250. But these are not the values which we are looking for. These are not the values which we are looking for. So, and then I'm going to limit it. Okay, so then I'll get, so title. So I'm going to run it and to get the answer. Okay, so that is the time domain graph. So I'm not much interested in that now. Okay, so I'm going to uncomment that. And here I have frequency domain graph. So that is a frequency domain. So here are that is a peak there, and then there are small peaks here. So let's say if I change that, if I change that value of n from let's say uh, 10 to raise power 16 so then by changing it okay so by changing the value of that so still I am getting the same sort of result okay so that is the only that is the only natural frequency of that system and it can be located easily so that is about 9.57 so the minimum value of n we need to select is that here 2 raised bar so whatever is the next power and then we can further like as here now if i am going to comment that one and open it so now with 2 raised bar i, I think it's a 2 raised bar uh, 12 whatever is getting so the value is 9.52 so the uh, frequency like the maximum frequency is 9.52 and if I am going to like run it and then it converts at it converts at 2 raised power 18 and the value is comes as 9.511 so 2 raised power 12 and as you go along 2 raised power 13 14 15 16 17 and onward so you will see that the maximum uh, next uh, maximum uh, frequency is going to start converging like somewhere to raise bar 18 so then from here these values i'm not interested in so i am going to put x limit on the graph so here i have x limit on the graph and then here's a short small script to find out the natural frequency so I'll find out that P uh, index of the P1 with the maximum value and then I got that corresponding value of the frequency. 
so that is now here you have frequency domain graph of this time domain graph okay so that is the frequency domain that is the frequency domain graph and here you have the that is the time domain and this is the frequency domain graph of this time domain so i hope you like this video thank you very much for watching so you can leave any comment for feedback and please subscribe my channel for more videos on vibration analysis on finite element analysis and then vibration analysis in a backcast vibration analysis in ANSYS and vibration analysis in SOLIDWORKS. Thank you very much.